heart of the tri-state area, street level on 5th Avenue. You're watching 2. Good evening, I'm Stephen Clark. And I'm Dana Tyler here on the Survivor Set. We're going to bring you the top stories of the day, but first, the story of the night, the Survivor finale. Dana? What a night, Stephen. Jaws dropped an hour into the finale when Rudy was voted off the island. They dropped again when former castaways voted to name Richard as the sole survivor. The general sentiment, most castaways were impressed by Richard's strategy. News 2 reporter Amy Stone was one of the tens of millions of viewers keeping a close eye on the show all night long, and she joins us live from a survivor party in Larchmont. Amy? That's right, I'm at the Sullivan Survivor Soiree, and let me tell you, this was the Super Bowl of the summer. The tribe has spoken for the final time. This was one television event people will be talking about for a long time to come. Well, at least until Survivor 2. Chance. After 39 days of being marooned, the final moment the world's been waiting for. The winner of the first Survivor competition is... And the newest millionaire is receiving mixed reviews at the Sullivan Survivor Soiree. I wanted rich. You know I did. And People you, won the, you won the party's pool, didn't you? I did. I won the pool. I knew he was going to do it. I'm very proud of Rich. I knew the alliance would come through. Uh, I mean, Kelly did a great job, but Rich is the man. Yeah, Rich! No, I'm not very happy. I wanted Kelly to win all the way. Kelly had heart. Kelly was in it for the, for the game. Rich just kind of backstab everybody the whole entire time. Oh, uh, you know, I was always for Sonia. Sonia's so long gone. Yeah, but I missed her. I missed her. I love to see, I, love, I like seeing her face. Brought back memories. After 200 pots of rice, a boatload of bug bites, and way too many shots of Rich's rump, the corporate trainer edges out the river rafting guide. But it was no piece of papaya cashing in. Case will go to a tiger. First, the immunity challenges. Kelly continues her hot streak. <laughs> Then, a tribal council tiebreaker. You sorry to see her go? Yeah, I thought she had a chance. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Not. Next, the immunity idol and Rich's survivor shock. To let it be in the end the way Mother Nature intended it to be. How about Sue going from tapioca to a tongue lashing? Wow, everybody's going to be talking about that tomorrow. All right, no more immunity challenges or tribal councils or alliances until the Aussie Outback for Survivor 2 in January. For now, it's Sarong from the Sullivan Survivor Shindig. This is Amy Stone, oh, there live the in flames. Larchmont. Oh, my. All right. The tribe has spoken, Amy. Thanks so much. We have a lot more ahead on this special edition of News 2. Coming up at 1111, we'll show you more of the Survivor parties happening throughout the city. Then we'll go live to Los Angeles, where you'll hear more from Richard about his big win. And at 1115, Robin Carter takes a closer look at what Richard and the other castaways face after tonight, both good and bad. Stephen? Thank you, Dana. The news of the night. A woman was pulled from the swirling Hudson River in a daring rescue today. It's not clear if this unidentified woman fell or jumped into the water near 77th Street today, but strong currents swept her down the river about seven blocks. A crew of iron workers working nearby saw her and jumped in to save her. I had a lot of help from my friend, uh, fellow iron workers. They put out some... Uh... The woman will be staying in the hospital until at least tomorrow. Searchers will have to wait until at least daylight to continue their search for two kids missing for two days now on a different part of the Hudson. Bad weather forced divers to stop looking for two emotionally disturbed teenagers. Police say the boys were swept away in the swift current off Croton Point Park during a field trip yesterday. The 15 and 17-year-old boys, residents of the Brooklyn Children's Psychiatric Center, had gone swimming in an off-limits part of the river during a field trip when they fell in. A tropical storm, Debbie, whipped over more Caribbean islands today. Evacuations are now underway in eastern Cuba, where the storm is expected to hit sometime in the morning. Forecasters now say it looks like Debbie will not hit the Florida coast and will skirt just south of it. But they're not taking any chances in the Florida Keys. Visitors have been ordered to leave. Debbie is weakening, but the storm could gain power when it emerges in the warmer waters of the Gulf of Mexico. News 2 meteorologist Craig Allen will have more on the path of Debbie in just a few minutes. Searchers say they have recovered the bodies of all the victims in the Airbus crash in the Persian Gulf. Witnesses say the plane was flying unusually low before it went down. The Airbus crashed three or four miles off the northern coast of Bahrain in the Gulf. 
Families of some of the victims waited at the Cairo airport for more information on their loved ones. Witnesses say they heard unusual noises from the engines just before the plane went down, but they saw no flames. The plane circled the Bahrain airport twice, then crashed on its third approach. All 143 people aboard were killed. One was believed to be an American diplomatic courier. Many were children. The widow of pro football player Fred Lane has been arrested in his shooting death. Prosecutors say 25-year-old Deidre Lane is being held tonight without bond, and she could be charged with first-degree murder. The former Carolina and Indianapolis running back was shot in the chest and the head last month as he arrived home in Charlotte. We have this just into news, too. We've gotten word that Verizon Communications has reached a tentative agreement with its workers in the mid-Atlantic states, including New Jersey and Washington, D.C., tonight. We invite you to stay with News 2 for the very latest on this developing story. We have a lot more ahead on this special Survivor edition of News 2. We'll go live to Los Angeles for the latest from Richard the Winner. Also, the castaways went through a lot to get their money, but there is a downside to winning all the money. you got to pay the taxes. Oh, yes. And we'll hear from one of the famous faces from the real world about how being on Survivor will change the lives of the castaways. It's all coming up next. Since he introduced the Flying Spot Laser by Ladar Vision, Dr. Delarusso has performed over 3,000 treatments, making him the most experienced Flying Spot Laser surgeon in the nation. He personally performs all surgeries in both his Manhattan and his New Jersey offices. Choose the country's most experienced Flying Spot Laser surgeon for next generation technology and personal care. Dr. Joseph Delarusso, 212-722-9200. It's about time. Making time. Taking time. Time flies at Dodge, where you'll find big savings on almost everything. Low financing. Big savings. It adds up. On Dodge Intrepid. Stratus. Neon. Or up to $2,000 cash allowance. Big savings on almost everything. Everything. It was the talk of the town today, even before the big finale. On the front page of the Post, the Daily News, USA Today, it'll definitely be there tomorrow, of course, talking about the excitement over the sole survivor. Oh, boy, what a day it was today. A lot of parties out there today also. Uh, gee, parties in Midtown, um, one of them, one of those parties. Look at all the fun that they're having there. A big bash at Planet Hollywood. Survivor fans got together to watch the show on a big screen TV and root for their favorite castaways. Whether there's one or lost, at least it looks like everybody had a good time and nobody <laughs> had to eat any bugs. No bugs on the menu. We found out, of course, who the lucky survivor was about an hour ago. And we're hearing a lot more from Richard Hatch about his big win. News 2 reporter Terry Okita spoke with Rich just a few minutes ago. She joins us live from Los Angeles with more on what Richard had to say. Terry, what, what's up? You know, he said that when he was sitting on that block and Jeff read three votes for Kelly and three votes for him, he was very nervous. And he says that if even if he'd won second place, he wouldn't have minded. He would have been happy to take home the 100000 But he said $1 million is very, very good. And um, I can also say that his take on uh, people saying that he was conniving or that he was the man that America loves to hate, he said that actually he believes that it may be something that the press built up. He doesn't think that he played it that way. He strategized from the very beginning. It's true. I remember the first episode, he actually said that, uh, guys, we need to sit down and strategize, and he did. It's tough to remember exactly what I was thinking. I remember feeling amazingly um, nervous. Just, just kind of shaking a little bit, thinking about the possibilities, happy if I'd won second, um, but when I won, uh, overwhelmed, kind of inside, really excited. Some called you cunning, some called you conniving, and some thought, you know, you were the man to hate in America. What was your reaction to how America was reacting to you? Well, from my perspective, I think the press has played up the uh, man you'd like to hate kind of thing, even comparing me to Heather Locklear, which I think of as a compliment. But I, but I, but I think, People see what I was doing, and, and I think I was really ethical in trying to win a game, and I started playing early. All uh, right. Terry Okita is speaking with Rich tonight. How about how he looked? He said that he uh, lost 100 pounds before the competition mm -hmm. and, and then 34. Yeah, something like that, yeah. He looks great. And the beard. Survivors put in a lot of work for that million-dollar prize. But guess who? Uncle Sam will get a good chunk of Richard's money. Hardly fair. He wasn't even on the island. <laughs> uh, Rich will pay roughly $360,000 in taxes on the prize, which if you can do the math there, then we did. 
We'll leave him with about $640,000 to enjoy as he will. And just because he won a lot of money, it does not mean his life will be easier. <laughs> News 2 Entertainment reporter Robin Carter is live right now on the Survivor set with a little insight on what Rich is going to face and the rest of them, Robin. Well, thanks, Stephen and Data. The tide has indeed come in for master strategist Rich, but will reality bite for the ultimate survivor and America's newest instant star? Joining me, our former Real World cast member Eric, Eric Neese, who appeared on the first season of the groundbreaking reality show on MTV and parlayed his fame into many other things, including being an MTV VJ and video exercise. And Mark Pizer, a senior writer at Newsweek magazine, who interviewed the four finalists for the cover story in this week's edition. Welcome, gentlemen. And first of all, let me ask you something. Eric, you've experienced, uh, you were on the groundbreaking reality TV show, The mm -hmm. Real World. I don't think we've ever seen anything like what we've seen with Survivor. What do you expect Richard to face now? Well, he holds, he holds the master key right now. I mean, his Q rating, which is, you know, how many people know who he is, is through the roof right now. Well, he's he an much, instant star. I mean, he, he's up there with a Cher, yeah. you know, Madonna and Richard. I mean, he you calls, have a one-name basis. He calls his own shots. He's going to create his reality. If he wants to be famous and stay in this business, he can do it pretty easy. He's a smart guy, obviously. He won this game. He's got, you know, he's wise, he's witty. But nothing prepares you for instant fame. E movie stars will <laughs> tell you that no, there is no handbook for this. So while you say he's in the driver's seat, yeah. he has lost anonymity completely. Mm -hmm. he, his life will never be the same. And there is a negative side to that, or no? Well, he's already had a little bit of a negative fallout. Before he even got to the finals, there was all this stuff about questions about how he was dealing with his son. And, you know, dirty laundry, whether it was true or not, it's going to find but him. But this is a guy who isn't going to be able to walk down the street anymore. He already can't walk down the street. It takes him an hour extra to go to the grocery store every day, just signing autographs. You interviewed all the final four just last Thursday. Mm. You did not know. You tell me you did not know until tonight. I was shocked. I think most people are <laughs> shocked. I mean, he was one of, the, certainly one of the two people that people thought would have no chance of winning. Were you shocked, Eric? Um, no, because you know, like like Rich explained it at the end of the show, it was a game, you know, and he he played he played to win it. Um, so whoever, I mean, it was kind of up in the air. You really couldn't mm -hmm. choose who you thought. The only reason I think you could choose is because of who you felt like emotionally maybe attached to, right. in some weird sense. Mark, do you think you've interviewed the four of them? You got to know them. Do you think Rich can handle what he's about to face? Uh, he seems he's very smart, very crafty. I think he can handle it if he chooses to. He seemed to sort of not be sure that he wanted a lot of fame last week. He hasn't really signed with any major agents. He wants to see what happens. Doesn't it's he have be, a radio he should, show He should in think Rhode twice Island? about it. I'm going to tell I'm just a little advice to all 16 people. Really, really think hard about staying in the entertainment business because it really, really does change your life and it brings a lot of weight on you that you have to handle. If you're not a strong, strong person, it can eat you up and spit you out, no mm -hmm. problem. Easily. Easily. <laughs> and a very big agent in New York today was quoted as saying, yes, these people will have their 15 minutes, but those 15 minutes are limited mm. and as the shelf life is short. Very so limited. So will we be saying Richard who a year from now? Well, Survivor 2 is going to be around and we're going to keep hearing his name from time to time, whether he can sort of tell the t pass the test of time. Who knows? I mean, But also know. you deal with reruns. I mean, you know, there's, there's shows that have been rerunning forever and these people stay famous forever. That could very well happen here, but, you know, they like I said, they, they, they hold the torch, and, and it's up to them whatever they want to do with it. If they want to be in this business, they got to act now and work real hard and attack at it. Well, Jervis has certainly acted. He is now, I understand, auditioned for John Travolta's new movie. Sean Kinef is uh, going to be on Extra. Do you get the sense from having talked with Richard? Obviously, he couldn't tell you he was the winner, but do you get the sense that he wants to become an actor or a radio call-in host or a TV chat host? He's going to be do filling in on a radio station next week in Rhode Island just for a couple of days. I really didn't get the sense that he was eager to do it. Many of these other people were much more eager to become big, famous people than he was.